What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 38. There is loads to get through today man, as we'll end the January transfer and we'll probably make a signing. Now we've got four first team players currently injured with broken toes. Uh, we'll have the FA Cup fourth round at home to Arsenal, really tough game there against Mikel Arteta's side. We'll have the first leg of the Champions League last 16 tie away in the Basque region against Real Sociedad and more big games in the league. Aim to stay top of the table with just two points, no sorry, three points separating the top four. There's tons to get through, man, so we're getting straight to it today. And as we turn down this bid for Jarrell Kwanzaa, let's get into the first game today. FA Cup fourth round just squeezed through the Hornets in the replay in our last game. So heading to this one, need a much better performance if we are to make it through against one of the favourites, Arsenal. At Anfield, FA Cup fourth round. Come on, Liverpool. Granted, we got through the replay pretty comfortably, but still got to be better. We are to make it through what will be one of the favourites for the FA Cup and also currently competing for a Premier League title as well. And the Gunners. Oh, that could have gone anywhere. Definitely going to make us work for this. And the one thing we don't want is yet another replay and having to go to the Emirates to try and make it through there. I doubt we'll be able to do that. Musa, Cody, takes in his stride. Got to finish. Gabba! Smashes it past Ramsdale. And 15 minutes in, Liverpool draw first blood. I don't really use those power shots very often because if I'm being honest here, I don't really think they make that much of a difference. Aesthetically, they look kind of cool when the camera zooms in. But this time, it is the blistering shot speed that sees the ball blast past Ramsdale and hit the bottom corner. Liverpool with the early advantage. And it could be two! What a massive block on Jack Clark that is. Yeah, when you go into a game like this one, you, you want to start off on the front foot. You know, get, get an early shot on target. Oh, that's a good tackle, but... Oh, no, 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 no. I just knew it. We, we toned down the injury sliders briefly in the last episode. But we're still going to have quite a few knocks. But I don't mind this, and I know I said it before. I know it can be frustrating, don't get me wrong. And the one thing I am frustrated with is the lack of variety of injuries. It's practically always a broken toe or a bruise. But I don't mind it. It is realistic for teams to, to get injuries. And at some point, sometimes might be unlucky and have an injury crisis too, like we're going through right now. But hopefully that is just a bruise for Boobs, because he's already had his broken toe this year. He's come back for that. And he's a massive, massive part of our midfield. Oh, it's got to be two. Gapo left all alone. Come on. Double up for Cody. Double up for Liverpool. I'm sure we're making it through today. And I'm taking no chances with camera as well. Taking him straight off. So oftentimes I'll, I'll get asked, like, does, does that mean anything? Like, if you take a player off, does it reduce their, uh, their injury that they might have got? Well, I don't think it does. But what it might do is possibly prevent the injury becoming worse. You've taken the player off, which means that whatever the original injury was... It can't be worsened from that point because you've got him down the tunnel, you've got him off the pitch, and now he can begin treatment instantly. So, yeah, um, I, I do it sometimes, sometimes I won't. It, it, it's situation specific, really. But in this case, Bubakar is just too good, man. So, if that injury, which looks as though it's a knock, was to get exacerbated, for example, if he was to get another injury in the game, that might upgrade the injury. This way, we've uh, we stopped the chance of that happening by subbing him off. I am not risking another three-month injury for Bubakar camera. What a ball by Musa. Alexander-Arnold to Clark. This should be free. I see Gakpo at the far post. I'd love to get him the hat-trick. But instead, a drill wide from the tight angle. I have to say, after a great start with Jack Clark, I've really struggled with him since around November time. We kick right on the edge for Liverpool. Cody's got it. But I'm going to give it to Trent instead. As we know this guy has got a, a decent record from, oh wow, I've seen this before, when you switch the, uh, the man and then they'll take players off the wall and then possibly put them back on, depending on who you're using. It's so bizarre. Do you think it's going to leave space there? You know, Gakpo, because Gakpo's got the power. So, Cody, just smash it. Oh, what a save, Aaron Ramsdale. Goodness, that looked like his save against Leicester. I think it was, was it Leicester when he made that incredible save? Oh, what a tackle, Rico Lewis. Aaron Ramsdale keeps Arsenal in the game with an unbelievable stop. Yeah, I think it was Leicester when Ramsdale made that incredible save from the free kick. 
as Martinelli managed to squeeze his way through three red shirts and drill it in. And that save might prove to be crucial because Arsenal have clawed one back, half the deficit, and there's four to go. I think we'll be all right. At this point here, all you've got to do is just keep holding the ball and you will be okay. And this will do it. I see Gakpo in the middle chasing a hat trick. But he said it offload for Musa. Game over. Little scare towards the end. But we're going to be all right. A four goal thriller in Anfield. But it's Liverpool who run out 3 1 winners. Put us in the fourth round. Yeah, well, I needed a replay to get through the Hornets. But no such problem against the Gunners. 3 1 victory. And we are into that for the fourth round. We won't see the draw. Um, until the ties that did go to a replay have been played. But uh, so that's a massive boost. Now, in this time, we won't require a replay and we're heading straight through. But how bad was the injury? Oh, wow. How, how I'll get to that in a second. How bad was it? Okay, it's a bruise for Bubakar. So thankfully, he's going to be all right. And I'm glad in the end I did take him off as a precautionary method. But uh, listen, if, did, if this bid was to come in in the summer, I'd let him go. I would let him go. But with a day to go before deadline day, I'm going to say to Mr. Perez, come, come, come back in July. Come back in July, we'll talk then. But not now. Levi is not leaving with half the year to go and a treble is still possible. Yeah, we're looking to sign players, not sell them. But uh, okay, so de de deadline day is here. And again, ca camera is going to be all right. So don't need to make the adjustment there. But four players down. Again, Robertson and Jones injuries are the most significant, of course. But I still think we need a squad player here. Uh, and I, I would probably say, I, I, I'm thinking actually what I might do is move Jarrell to, to left back. Because at centre half, we've got Kwanzaa, we've got Konate, we've got Colwell. And I think that might be the best thing for him, you know, to fill in whilst we're currently missing Andy Robertson. And that way we'll still have Ben possibly either playing left back or right back and then maybe sign a new centre half for the, for the squad. That seems like a good strategy to me. The player I, I really want to bring back is Nico Williams, who I know I've signed a couple of times before, but he'd literally be perfect right now. Absolutely perfect, you know, with the injury to Andy Robertson. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get another couple of hours just in case, but Fenerbahce, they just don't want to sign a right back. They don't want to bring in another right back. They're like, no, 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 Nico Williams is the Welsh Cafu. We, we don't want a new right back. We're totally fine with him. We're not going to sell him back to your Liverpool. So um, that's so annoying. That's, that's, that's really, really annoying, but we can't bring him in. So in which case, I'm going to bring back a former academy grad. Someone that's a little bit versatile, can play in a different range of positions. It's primarily better going forward. But again, just someone who's going to know his role here. Sporadic squad role. And like Pedro Shiravela, who he signed from Nantes, he's, he's barely going to play. But this is, the, this is the sort of player that I feel like every team kind of needs. You know, someone that just knows they're barely ever going to be called to action. But when they are... They'll do a decent job. Bobby Clark uh, came through Liverpool Academy. I think we should be able to get him for close to valuation. Not that the money's really important, but for £6 million, we'll get rid of that sell-on clause. Not that it really matters. And they'll say yes, regardless. Bobby Clark, just like Shiravela, is going to return to Liverpool just to be a squad player. Nice bit of versatility. We'll take it. Yeah, I like this kid, man. Just scored his first senior goal for the club in the Europa League against Sparta Prague. And he's already got a winner's medal to his name in the EFL Cup as well. Not quite sure just how high is he is but certainly good enough to be a squad player in this Liverpool team and certainly essential in this current injury crisis. Welcome back to Anfield, Bobby Clark. 22 years old, already up to 74 overall now. I'm not sure what his starting overall was, but again, in his early 20s means he's still got quite a bit of growth to go, so I don't see why I couldn't get him into 80 or possibly an 81. Look at Kwanzaa, for example. Brought him back. He's now become our third choice centre-half and he's already 81 overall as well. Again, he's got some decent versatility. You know, can defend, could possibly possibly turn him into a wing back, although it would take a while, uh, or again, play him slightly further forward where he's probably a little bit better. For now, we'll, uh, we'll get the defensive work rate up to high, because you know that's important to me, and I like him, man. Decent squad player to bring back here. And as we head into the final hour on deadline day, there was a target I was considering bringing in as well. Uh, speaking of Kwanzaa, Aston Villa put in a bid, and they want to give us Tav, of course we have with Bournemouth, but of course we're going to say no. And turned down a bit of a cold war from Leverkusen as well. Sepp van der Berg um, just went from Rangers to Newcastle. I was, I was thinking about bringing him in myself, but sadly can't do so now. 
Um, to be honest, I, I might actually not make another. So I was thinking about winning two or three, but actually I might leave it there. Again, Boobs' injury is only five days. Robertson, Carvalho, Jones, and Athena Jan still down, but Robertson and Jones should return slightly earlier around late February. I might just say this will do us, you know. We still got, again, the, the full bench, then there's Beck, Shiravela, Clark, Gordon. Is that is that going to be enough? Or do we need one more? I would say one more squad player. I would say bring someone else in. And there's a couple of youngsters here that I'd really like. Unfortunately, uh, Mario Ruiz has just gone to Espanol from who I don't know. But there's this lad here, Victor Rojas, who looks at about, about the same. Uh, perhaps perhaps slightly worse, but not, not much difference there. He is a year older at 19, so technically he couldn't become homegrown and trained after three years. But right now at RB Leipzig, 19 years old. Looks like the uh, the regen of Nacho Fernandez, who is, well, the ultimate squad defender. I'm sure my Real Madrid fans would uh, would, would agree with that. And I think we should, we should be able to get him, I'd say, for around 15 to 20 mil. And just here is a young lad to, uh, to develop... For the squad, but we'd still get a bit of game time as well. I, I, I think it's worth looking into bringing this guy in. Because again, we've got pl plenty of cash. The money's not the issue at all. And uh, okay, well, perhaps he's actually a little bit better than I thought. Let's go 22.5 mil for Victor Rojas. And they say, yeah, not at all sure how good this guy is, but looks versatile and can play all across the back line, which that is his, his best asset, I would say. Yep, took a gamble on this guy with knowing nothing about him, but it turns out we've made a really good decision to bring him in. So on a five-year, 37 grand a week contract, Victor Rojas is here at Anfield, and I must say, he looks like a really good young player because as you will see, he shows the great potential tag. He can play left back and right back as well as center half. So that means that he probably is the regen of Nacho Fernandez. 85 strength. He's got a bit of pace as well. And he's also reasonably comfortable on the ball with 67 for short pass. So the vision is, uh, is horrendous. That does need a lot of work, of course. But yeah, uh, I'm not going to retrain him anywhere. I'll keep him at center half. And I get that defense to work right up from medium to high. Yeah, he, he looks like a solid, solid squad player to come in. So what I might do is now make him my fourth choice behind Jarrell and move Hato uh, out to left back or CDM. He can play either of those roles just fine. But I think for now, due to the injury to Robertson, I'm going to shift him to left back first and then probably CDM afterwards. That's where I see his long-term future in this Liverpool team. So there we go. Two new signings on deadline day. No departures, obviously. And you see the top deals here. How much did Torres go for? Oh, wow. Buying it. Oh, he's 31 now. I was going to say, yeah, of course, with five seasons in. I keep, I keep forgetting sometimes how far we are in. I was going to say, Pau Torres, 40.7 mil. How good has he been, by the way, recently for Unai Emery? But uh, yeah, you see a big deal there. Uh, Bradley Barcola, young French wonder kid going from PSG to Inter for 76.8 mil. Fabiano Parisi has left Arsenal. Good news for us there. Title rival getting weaker, uh, selling him to Napoli with 61.9 mil and Sasha Bowie is uh, in the Premier League joining from Barca to Manchester United for 56.7 million pounds. Okay, no blockbuster deals on deadline day. We didn't want to do any blockbuster deals. The, the main concern was the depth and we've now added to it with the signings of Bobby Clark and Rojas as well. Yep, that's exactly what we planned. Right, first game outside the window. Fulham at home, aiming to stay top of the Premier League and what is looking set to be a thrilling title race, just like in real life. Massive game here to kick off February. Come on, Liverpool. How often do you hear me talk about the importance of these games here and say these are the ones where if you don't win the title come the end of the season, these are the games you look back on and say, this is why. Never mind losing at the Etihad. Never mind being held to a goal destroyer at, at the Emirates. No, no one's, no one's going to be too disappointed at that, at that result. But if you don't win these games, these are the ones where you look back on the, the, the end of the season, look back at the results, and you say, we lost the title by a point, and this is why. We had a goal destroyer at home to Fulham. We had a 1-0 away loss at Bramwell Lane. Those, those are the games that sting the most if you don't win the title, because you expect to win. And if you watched my Almeria career mode earlier this year, you would have heard me talk about it. It was the philosophy for what was the title winning year. Win your bankers, win the championship. Luis Diaz ensuring we should be doing that tonight. One it up, 28 minutes in. It was really cool because for those that didn't watch the career mode, then basically, spoilers, uh, if, you, uh, if you're planning on going back and watching it, it was a great save, really great save. Um, 
we, we had a chance to win the championship, I think it was in season three, and we blew it. Not because we lost to Real Madrid or Barcelona, but because we had losses away at Mallorca or at home to Cadiz. And it was like, this is just not going to cut it if you want to win a championship, man. So in, the, in what was the title winning season, I said pre-season, get a free season, I was like, right, f forget, forget winning at the Bernabeu. Forget winning at home to Barca. Just beat your Osasunas at home. You know, just beat the teams that we expect to win. And I feel confident we'll win the championship. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. I think we only had one what you'd call proper slip-up in the entire season. And in the end, that's why, even though we did lose at home to Real Madrid, even though we were held away at the new Camp, we were still title winners because we won the Bankers. Eberechi doubles up. And we're going to win this banker as well. Tune it up on Fulham before the hour mark. That's going to do it. Yep, nobody is going to be too disappointed with a 1-1 draw away against Spurs or a 2-2 draw away at St. James, just like we had this season, for example. But it would have been how we not won this game. When you bankers win the championship, job done in this one. 2-0, comfortable victory at Anfield. Also, can I say as well, this, this might be... Oh, thank you, Spurs holding Manchester City. These Liverpool kits might be my favourite Liverpool kits in my lifetime. Possibly, possibly. Um, so we've now gone two clear now. So Chelsea must have won. They had a tough game at home to Arsenal. But we are we are top now. Now we're playing on the Sunday. So I'm just going to advance through here. But uh, I, I love Liverpool's kits this year. I think they are so clean. So, so clean. And two more bids for Carl Wood and Kwanzaa. But once again, we're not going to accept those. But just before we get to the Sunday game, I just want to see if there were some slip-ups. So we are still top, but it's only on goal difference. Okay, all right. Game in hand, though, and a chance to extend the gap back to three points. Big one here on the Sunday. Roberto De Zerbi's Brighton on the south coast. Right now, still top on goal difference, but if we are to lose this game, for example, we'll drop to second place. So, massive game here. Chance to go free clear or possibly drop to second. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, quite a bold thing to say, really, when you consider the Carlsberg era. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say the, these Liverpool kits this season, I, I, I'd say they're my favourites. I'd say they are my absolute favourites. What a save by Alisson. Uh, and I know it's all subjective, don't get me wrong, you know. It's not like one kit is head and shoulders above the others. It's all subjective, personal taste. But yeah, I, I love these kits, man. I absolutely love them. Advice, please, ref. Thank you very much, as Jack Clark fires in the opener. Red Hot start for Jack Clark has slowed down a little bit since the early beginning, but that's a wonderful finish. Liverpool lead. At some point, I will do a video on like my, my favourite kits from all teams in world football, you know, because I'm such a football kit enthusiast, man. And, um, yeah, I just, I, just, I just love talking about it. What can I say? Anyway, Brighton level in the 51st minute. Former player with Bournemouth as well. Lewis Cook with equaliser. 1-1 one, one right before the break. It's been a disappointing slip-up. We'll stay top, but we need to win these games, man. Obviously, over time, certain sponsors do become synonymous with a team. Uh, if you, you, know, if, you know, Carlsberg, for example, you do think, you think Carlsberg, you think of Liverpool. Um... But you have to remember, like, Liverpool have had standard chart for about a decade now on, on, on their shirts. So they're starting to become just as... Uh, oh, what a ball that is. Just as sort of connected with Liverpool, if you will, as, uh, as the great lager manufacturer. Anyway, it's still 1-1 here. I haven't quite been at my best in this one. Probably because I spent half an hour talking about kits. Jack Clark rolls it through. Musa through the gap. Gap Says Sars Carlsberg. I'm Cody. I don't know what that means. Cody Gapo with the finish. He's been on fire recently. Liverpool restored the league with 18 to play. Well, this is going to be a massive, massive, massive win for Liverpool. Come on. Little fist pump from Doxy Boy on the sidelines and behind the microphone. Best believe it. That's a huge win now. Away at Brighton. Very tough place to get a win, especially getting it late after surrendering a lead right before the break. Big three points there. And I think we've just had the draw for the FA Cup fifth round where we'll be taking on in the last 16. Oh, wow. Colchester United. So a, a little bit of luck there. After being drawn against Arsenal in the last round, we'll now take on one of the lowest ranked sides. There's a lot of them, to be fair. You've got 
Bolton Wanderers who are going to Everton. You've got Blackpool versus Barnsley. Plymouth Argyle are away at Selhurst Park. The Borough who were relegated last year at home to Leicester City. Uh, Sunderland away at Ellen Road. We've got Colchester to use. And Forest Green Rovers travel to Stamford Ridges. Football League teams galore. So I guess not too much of a surprise. We've got one ourselves in the last 16. When is that round? Can I squeeze that in today? When is that? Uh, maybe I'll see what I can do but let's play this one for sure West Ham at home following game here aiming to keep the winning run going and stay top of the Premier League table come on Liverpool easy 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 David Neres oh wow okay Wo woeful start woeful start simple ball into the middle no one cut it out and the Brazilian pops it past his compatriot at the near post okay alright well that was not in the script 1-0 down play plenty of the game to go and I, feel, I, feel, I feel confident. We'll, we'll still be all right, I'm sure. Ubercar. Diaz. Gakpo, surely. Oh, wow, what a miss. Weaker left foot, but even so, well off target. And still we remain trailing by a goal. Man, I have been poor in this game, but... Oh. There's time, but I feel I'm going to run out of it. Well... Yeah, that's it. It's over. Oh, my God. I have not played well. I, I always say this, though, that when I've not played well, I'm going to admit it. This has been a poor one from me here. Ah, forget it. Blew it. Blew this. We won the title on the final day in this fixture of a 1-0 victory. Let's just say West Ham waited a while to get their revenge, but get their revenge they shall. No! Oh, come on! Bailed out by the ex-black cat. Jack Clark with a leather and a death. That is still two points dropped. But at least one extra point on the board. And after the game, we do see that Jarrell is ready to become a left back. I, I, again, as a centre half, he's, he's, he's more than capable there. But again, to me, I, I feel like with the pace he's got, he'd be better as an attacking left back with the high attacking work rate naturally as well. Or again, potentially with the 89 short pass also turning into a DM. So we'll, we'll keep him at left back for now. But I do feel as though in the future he'll be turned into a DM in this team. Right, here we go. First leg. Uh, Chelsea last 16 against Real Sociedad. Certainly favourites for it. But on the back of that poor draw there, we'll need to be a lot better if we are to take a first leg victory back to Anfield for the second. So, yeah, could well be a shock here if we're not on our game. Let's return to anyways and take a lead back for the second leg in the northwest of England. Come on, Liverpool. Cody to Jarrell. And lifts it for Stefan. Oh, there we go. And this is the pace I was talking about with Jarrell to get away. Easy money. Easy money. As Jack got... Finally, finally, I'm starting to get a sort with this guy. I just, I just literally, I started off red hot with this guy. And then I slowed down. But this happens so often for me. During the course of a season, like I'll start off with one player and he's just absolutely lights out. And then, nothing for like 10 or 12 games. Maybe one goal and two assists or something. But finally, starting to get the form sorted again. 13 minutes in, a perfect start. Up a goal in the Basque region. And I just felt I was going to be able to do that there. Intercept with Ben Doak. There's Gakpo. For the second, shot blocked and cleared. This is definitely going to be our game tonight. I can already feel it. You know when you know when you're in sort of like flow. It just, it just feels like all the right off the ball movements are being made. You've always got a free man to pass to. There we go. Oh, wonderful finish. It's just it's just that sort of game. You know, you can sometimes you can tell within the first five, ten in game minutes. You know, when it just feels like your your players are in flow. There's such fluidity to the movement, the passes are on point, and the finishes are perfect. Tune it up. Yeah, I think we're going to be all right in this first leg, and I think we carry this on, we'll be fine in the tie as well. Trent down the line. Wonderful ball. And Clark. Oh, Jack, wonderful turn. And can he put a finishing move? Yes, he can. Keeper stuck in a chance. It's still broken. It will be until the end of FC. Keeper's... Sometimes getting stuck on the spot, but for that moment there, to be fair, if he comes out, he's going to get rounded. If he stays on his line, 
He's given me the angle at the near post, and if I want the far post, possibly just squeeze it through his legs. And yeah, we went near post, we converted, Jack's brace, and that's going to do it. Liverpool taking a free goal lead back to Alfred. That's, that's the perfect, absolutely perfect first leg result, man. Knowing back home, we can rest quite a few starters, feeling as though we've got one foot in the quarterfinals. Inch perfect display in the Basque region tonight. Yep, that is about as good of a performance and a result as I could have potentially hoped for. 3-0 heading back home, we've we've definitely gone on for I'm always I'm always careful to say that when you head into a second leg of a European tie, because you can just never predict football sometimes, but based on that performance, it will take a heck of a choke to be exiting at this stage. I uh, I think we've got one foot in the quarters here. Right, still a couple more games, starting one of the biggest games of the season. Arsenal in North London, massive clash here as the Gunners look for revenge after we dumped them out of the FA Cup. We could go seven clear of a win here in North London, but if Arsenal get the win, they'll cut the gap on us to just a one point. Huge contest at the Emirates Stadium in the battle for the title. Come on, Liverpool. Reese Nelson trying to get around Ben McKenzie, does well. And can't beat Levi Cole, sticking out a big leg. He is, oh, that's a poor pass. He is, uh... He is probably on his way in the summer, I must say, to, again, a Real Madrid or a PSG, possibly. But it's going to be a big blow when we do lose him because our defence is nowhere near as good when he's not involved in the play. He's, he's amazing. Gabriel Martinelli, speaking of amazing, gives Arsenal the lead. And the worst possible start, 20 minutes here. We might have dumped him out of the cup, but they love the three points here in a six-point clash. 1-0 down early, but plenty of game to go. And I often say it, one of the advantage of conceding early? Oh, time is on your side. Just don't panic. Plenty of game to go. Yeah, you just got to make sure you don't capitulate. Just stay in the game, you know? Even if you can't, fi oh, even if you can't find a leveller straight away, don't worry about it. You've still got plenty of time. You saw the West Ham game. Yeah, okay, we didn't win it in the end. We drew it, but still, right at the death, managed to put, put an extra point on the board. The, the, the most important thing is you just don't capitulate. You don't feel sorry for yourself. You don't start to throw in the towel early. You just stick with it, man. Lesson for life, football, and FC as well. Just stay in the game. Come on. Jack Clark says, Gaffer, message received. Drills in his third in two games. Liverpool level it. No, sorry. That's four in three now. Oh, come on. Yeah, well, thank you. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. There you go. It's fine, it's fine, fine. Just hold on. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. That's well done, actually. Camera out wide to Trent. Look at the space here for Trent. Now, if I can play a 1 2 and get it to him via Jack Clark, the deliveries he's got and the space here, hangs it up brilliantly. Diaz! You can't give Trent that sore room. Because he's got the vision, he's got the passing ability, and crucially, he's got the teammates to get on the end of those balls. Diaz at the back stick head time, comeback complete, Liverpool lead in North London. Look at the space here, look at the space, Tino nowhere near him, so he hangs it up beautifully, and Rico Lewis loses the aerial duel as Diaz head time. If we can hold on to this, this will be massive, seven point gap on Arsenal, and that meet might be, possibly, one team wondering if they're out of this title race. It was going to be a four horse race. We might be killing one horse and sending them packing. I mean, there'll still be plenty of time. A revive, please, ref. Oh, I've just seen Clark has stayed down as well. Trent ran out of legs towards the end, but that is a concern. Oh, Musa, what in, mate? This has got to be free. Someone get on the end of this. Easy. Oh, Schlotterbeck is there. And, okay, a bit of a scramble, but we'll get it back. There we go. And there's going to be a man around the far side, and Rico Lewis is there. You might as well stay with me for the final seconds, because the ref is going to vote for full time directly after this clearance. Yep, Jack Clark, you see him there. Goes down, and there's a little bit of concern there. Liverpool leave it late to win the game. Get a huge three points, coming from behind to win. And like I said, this is why when you concede early, don't panic. Don't capitulate. Just stay in the game. You've got plenty of time to turn it around. We've done that. But the question is, how bad was that injury for Jack Clark? Praying that's not a broken toe for Mr. Clark, who's really picked his form up recently. Man City with a massive win at Bramwell Lane to keep the, uh, the gap on us at one. But how bad was that injury there for Clark? It was... We are truly cursed with broken toes this year. 
Jack Clark is done for this season. And I might actually leave it there as well, because that is a huge way to end today's episode off. Yeah, we get the win, but at what cost? Clark, done for the season. Yeah, a bit of an impromptu end to today's episode and a tough one as well. But we will leave it there, guys. So massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed today's episode. And if you have then please do drop a like. Myself, you all have a fantastic day. I've got my maths wrong, as always. We're actually four clear of Chelsea and Man City, but seven clear of Arsenal. 13 games to go. And in the next episode, we'll return with a few of those 13 games. We'll have the FA Cup last 16 against Colchester United. And if we get through that, I think we might be able to squeeze the quarterfinal in at the same episode as well. And we'll also have the second leg of the Champions League last 16 against Sociedad where we should be making it through and if we do get through that as well we'll have a draw for the quarterfinals have a great day guys much love and I'll see you for the next episode very soon